not looking back Eyes on the freeway, Bonnie and Clyde A classic cliche, we're on the run This is what we waited for Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to our TikTok 3.0. Let me remind all of you to please subscribe our uh, channels in YouTube and Facebook, My Unireza. Now, one of the adverse effects of COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown is on our mental health. Day by day, we hear and read of people suffering from high levels of anxiety, depression, domestic violence, suicidal thoughts, and many more mental health-related issues. The nature of their educational experience, job execution, and availability radically changes the burden on the mental health of this vulnerable population and hence it's amplified. This creates the need for mental health-based careers in near future. With our academic experts for today, we'll discuss further on uh, psychological impact of the pandemic and the future demands in mental health-based careers. We hope that our viewers today can gain some knowledge and better understanding about psychology programs in detail. First up, let's have our corporate video and we'll be right back with you.
Hi everyone. Hello beautiful ladies. It's such a joy to have all of you back on the show. Uh, oh, and it's the first time for uh, one of you here, Ms. Shazwani. And we also have with us Dr. Zaida Mustafa, who is uh, no stranger to TikTok and many other shows. I'll introduce everyone in a bit and welcome uh, Ms. Lily as well. How is everyone doing? Good. All right. Great. Okay. Um, so thank you all of you again for availing your time to share with us uh, a fruitful discussion on mental health as well as uh, careers related to mental health. First up, I'm going to introduce Associate Professor Dr. Zaida Mustafa, Dean of School of Education and Humanities. So Associate Professor Dr. Zaida has more than 28 years of working experience in the education industry. Her experience in teaching and also coaching for the schools, Institute Pendidikan Guru Malaysia with Kementerian uh, Pelajaran Malaysia KPM. Dr. Zaida graduated in PhD in Educational Psychology and Pedagogy from University Malaya, Master in Education focusing in Curriculum and Instruction from the University of Houston, United States, and Bachelor of Arts from University Malaya. Her involvement in education was not only in teaching, uh, and educating, but also involved in management program for program Paka Jurulate Penambah Baikan Sekolah under the program of Transformasi Kerajaan 2.0. And she also uh, is the executive representative for Pengurusan Prestasi for Teachers Education in Transformation Kerajaan uh, 1.0 program. So very experienced and um, extremely credible and extremely friendly. Uh, she, you will be able to hear her thoughts in a moment. Uh, let me take this time to also introduce Ms. Lily Zahara Ramli, Program Director of School of Education and Humanities. Ms. Lily Zahara is a lecturer and the Program Director for Bachelor of Education and Bachelor of English. She has been teaching for 15 years in various tertiary institutions and is a certified HRDF trainer. She's currently pursuing her PhD in Education, Education Technology, and has extensive experience with corporate and international training, uh, liaisons, mobility and collaborative projects and and the list just goes on but right now she is an advocate for lifelong learning learning experience design creative teaching inclusive education and um and online collaborative learning. So uh, very, very happy to have you on board. And finally, I'm going to introduce uh, Ms. Siti Shazwani Muhammad Yusuf, Executive, Uniraza Digital Design and Development. She is a graduate in psychology, majoring in children and family from University of Malaysia, Sabah. She has been working in the university level education field since 2013, uh, especially in the student affairs department. Currently, she is one of the staff behind the scenes that manages our Eurox Uniraza online experience platform. Uh, so again, welcome all three beautiful ladies looking lovely, um, especially Puan Lili. I love your background. It It's so zen. <laughs> uh, very nice to look at, uh, very pleasing to the eye and um, and, and I think uh, it's good to, you know, get together today and talk about something that is uh, very much happening right now and is affecting quite a lot of people. So my first question goes out to Associate Professor uh, Dr. Zaida. I'm going to call her Prof from now onwards. And uh, you are an experienced person in the education industry, servicing both in government and private sector. And now, as the Dean of School of Education and Humanities, from your observation and opinion, how is the pandemic um, impacting the overall well-being of the academic and non-academic staff, students and society in general? Can you share your views? Thank you, Grace. Um, I have been in this industry for 38 years and never think that uh, this kind of um, new norms hit us, especially educators and education all the world. It has been almost two years the COVID-19 pandemic hit us. 
it took us by surprise. And in education, for the first for the past five years, we talk a lot about 21st century learning, 21st century learners, hybrid learning, self-directed learning, flipped classroom, just to give awareness about uh, to teachers and the society what we are going to happen in the 21st century. But in fact, I am I and my team has started in the Ministry of Education, Teacher Education Division at that time, uh, to uh, to help teachers integrating ICT in the classroom. But when the pandemic hit us in March 2000 to 2020, face-to-face -face learning session is not an option. School closed. Student instructional time has been compromised. Issues and challenges related to remote learning bring stress, anxiety, tension to teachers and parents alike and everyone are not ready. So um, it is not like us in Uniraza. Before uh, March 2020, we have been using online learning uh, through our Eurox. Thank you to Eurox team, Eurex team. And when we need it, we have it. But for the public out there, for the public schools, public teachers, uh, public school teachers, they are not trained. Um, the teacher training colleges are not uh, are not uh, 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 equip them with the the so called remote learning yet at that time. So um, when the student instructional time has been compromised, issues and challenges related to remote learning, everyone being stressed. It is not only about um, uh, connectivity. It is not only about the issue of uh, um, gadget, it is also the skills and knowledge that the teachers and parents have to be the partner, the partner of or to be the helper or to be someone who could help their kids to learn at home. Can you imagine where so long we believe, most of the public believe that Education for the kids is the responsibility of teachers in schools. Now, we are actually flipping the table where, 70, where all of us know that 70% of education happens at home. And parents are the best uh, teachers for their kids. But this remote learning really has some impact on um, uh, parents' anxiety level because they don't really uh, equip with the knowledge and skills about helping their kids. They don't know about the curriculum, the school curriculum. They are not trained about pedagogy, the best pedagogy to help their kids at home. And uh, this is, I mean, something that um, uh, all schools and the Ministry of Education and all of us, even uh, uh, Uni Raza, we have come up with alternative that uh, when uh, we know that the students are not able to come to school, the training is not only for the teachers, the training is also for the parent at home, how they can manage students' behavior while learning, how they can somehow be the second teacher to their kids, to their children. And um, that is number one. Number two, uh, it is about... Uh, uh, the the mental well-being experienced by the students. And can you imagine, Grace, that when we are talking about learning, learning is best learned through fun environment. Like Ibn Sina says that uh, the uh, prerequisite of learning is love. You cannot project love through screen learning. But uh, love, the energy about learning comes from the physical interaction and this is not available and this challenge uh, pose a real uh, uh, acute problems to the mental well-being of students in engaging them in learning and retaining the knowledge and skills uh, that should be delivered uh, 
through the curriculum delivery. So I would say that uh, stress is not the adequate term to use in this and describing the struggle faced by teachers, the struggle faced by parents to adapt to the new norms. And we in the in uh, Uniraza, uh, where we are dealing with adult learners who are also working adults, and they experience uh, um, they lost their jobs. And they are actually the uh, entrepreneurs and uh, they have a bank loan and the business is not, they, they cannot do their business as usual. And can you imagine where the business, uh, we can, they cannot do their business, but still they have to pay bank loan for, the, uh, for renting to pay uh, um, um, salary uh, to their teachers because most of our students, um, most of our students are childcare centers operators. So I would say that this pandemic, uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, really hit everyone in the society. But in education, I really worry about the the effect of mental health to uh, school children. Okay, okay, that is uh, a start from me, Grace. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Prof. You have described very well uh, the problems that especially students are facing, students' parents are facing. Um, and, and you mentioned rightfully that our students come from a wide pool of population. We have a lot of working adults with us. And some of them, as you mentioned, have probably lost their job uh, and also have been greatly affected by this pandemic. Not only that, I, I also know uh, you, ha you have recently lost a student uh, to COVID-19 and uh, many other students who have been, who have uh, relatives or even parents or sibling who have been affected by COVID-19 itself. So the, the stress is real and it hits all uh, facets of our life. Uh, studying online is never uh, easy to start with. When we started, I, I remember because I'm an educator as well. And so I remember um, in 2020, we when it happened, we all were called for a meeting and we had to strategize on how to best go about this. We had a few days to do that, uh, but all of us just um, had faith and we, we, we did it. We did it the best we could and right now we are in Improvising with great help from your red team over there. Uh, so Siti Shazwani is one of them. And um, I'm uh, very happy to, to see our progress that we have made uh, from how we started and how we are now with our remote learning. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Prof, for clearly describing what are the issues that our students are facing and some of the academics are facing and also society in general. Uh, my next question would be to Ms. Lily. As an educator and corporate trainer, why is studying psychology courses and programs important uh, right now during and after pandemic, especially career-wise? All right. Uh, thank you for the question, Ms. Grace. Um, I hope you can listen to me clearly. Yeah? So um, for the um, new fast-spreading variants, um, that have caused a surge in infections in many countries and uh, a renewed lockdown again around the world. The devastation of the pandemic with millions of deaths, economic strife and unprecedented curbs on the social interaction has already had a marked effect on people's mental health. Yeah, so I think you and I are both aware about this. There's increase of a lot of uh, suicidal cases, okay, as well as domestic violence. And therefore, researchers worldwide are investigating the causes and the impact of this stress. Um, and some fear that the deterioration in mental health could linger long after the pandemic has subsided. Okay, so ultimately, scientists hope that they can use the mountains of data being collected right now as we speak about studies on mental health to the link of impact of particular control to measure changes in people's well-being and to inform the management of future pandemics 
particularly in decision makings and policies during the times of the crisis. Whatever career you pursue, okay, a background in psychology will enhance your employability. So I think we have one need to speak about that. So studying psychology can do the following. Firstly, it will help you to understand yourself and other people by learning about aspects of human behavior that will help you in your daily life. This includes your daily interaction with others, your learning and memory performance, your ability to cope with pressure, as we are all facing it right now, and your understanding of the causes of psychological disorders. Secondly, it can also help with complement uh, either by learning or, or combining psychology with other courses. Okay, so I think with the, with the studies of psychology, with the in inclusion of psychology in uh, a lot of programs, for instance, or a standalone program uh, as what we have in the Niraza, many courses in the Faculty of um, uh, Education uh, and Humanities in SEH, for example, we call it SEH, okay, in Niraza, benefit from an understanding of human behavior, be it on social interaction, language, and communication. So this includes human motivation, emotion, or the process of decision-making. So knowledge about brain function and behavior is one of the considerable benefits of our students who are studying in this program, yeah? So we incorporate this in the psychology courses related. Number three is that by studying psychology, it will help sound analytical skills through the application of scientific methods. So psychology is a science, everybody knows that. So the defining feature of any science is the objective approach that is used to advance our knowledge. In psychology, we use this scientific approach to learn about behavior and the mental life. So psychology provides an excellent training in analytic thinking and scientific research methods that are applicable to a broad range of careers. Number four, studying psychology will prepare you for a career as a professional psychologist or human-to-human -human interaction services with regards to human experience and make sense of it. Now, um, excuse me, yeah. So basically, uh, when you deal with human interaction, uh, you know that you'll be dealing with a lot of human behaviors, human emotions, uh, human mental health, so on and so forth. Yeah, so there's a lot more. So um, I think that would be um, some of the um, concerns. Okay, and then I think number five, uh, the reason why you need to uh, learn psychology is because it provides an excellent job prospects in wide range of careers. Okay, this include job outlook, okay, or careers or labor market research of information in the Malaysian government, for example, uh, you can point out the careers that leads to, you know, area of psychology, um, where it, it is employed across several industries, including healthcare, social assistance, social um, activism, okay, public administration and safety, for instance, education and training, um, administrative uh, support as well as support services. Okay, so there's a mix of industries which are highly favorable for our futures, future graduates, okay, for this um, program. So that's my answer, Ms. Grace. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Lily. I think we took a lot from it. There were five points and all five points were extremely valid, extremely useful for us to know. And uh, if I may add, I think uh, not just that we, you know, we learn how to cope with pressure and things like that, but I think we also learn how to help other people who have issues. And, um, and right now, it's also all about helping our community, helping our friend, our neighbour, uh, our colleague, uh, who are perhaps 
perhaps showing signs of uh, of stress, anxiety, and things like that. Sometimes uh, a friend may call up and ask, and they are facing certain things. And sometimes I'm I'm quite uh, unsure of how best to advise them. So having psychology embedded in our courses is extremely important because we never know when it will be needed. And for now, like as you have said. Um, uh, scientists are looking into this huge pool of data in which uh, people all around the world are, um, are, are having um, some sort of mental disorder or mental health issue or stress-related issues. And uh, we are looking at how to, how to overcome it easily. Okay, thank you so much. And um, Ms. Shazwani, you've been quiet for about 20, 20 minutes already. It's your turn now. Um, to be honest, uh, I have been working for you for, uh, with you for, for a few years and I did not know you have a degree in psychology. I always thought you had something to do with information technology or digital skills because you are probably the first person I call when I need help with my online learning platform. So uh, now it, it's so refreshing to know that uh, you have a degree in psychology. And how does your psychology qualification help you in your personal life and dealings with various human issues at a personal level, at a professional level and your social circles? Okay, thank you, Grace. Okay, kind of interesting. I give off that vibe that I'm from background information technology. No, my background is actually in psychology. I major in children and family, especially uh, I got my qualification from University of Malaysia Sabah. Now, although I graduated with major in children and family, actually I do learn about all psychology fields in general. No, I do learn about how, like Madam Lily mentioned just now, how to do psychological experiment, especially related to human behavior. I learn about old people. I learn about, let's say, in terms of psychological situation, how does the brain actually affect you? So there are actually various ways. Psychology is actually a very wide field. You can learn a lot. There's a lot of psychological field. There's even like animal psychology. So if you can see somebody like, uh, Caesar Milan, he really knows about dogs or Jackson Galaxy about cats. They know about dog behavior. They know about cat behavior. Or if you like children, you can go into children behavior, adult behavior. So there is also a feel about like Dr. Zaida's qualification, educational psychology. If you like education, there is a psychological feel about it. As for me, what psychology has done, what I learned, and actually that, especially in today's world, we are living in a volatile world. We need to understand other people. Actually, it will help us and we help other people as well, especially our surroundings. Now, before you can understand other people, you need to have at least some understanding of yourself. And yourself, it can change throughout the time. So let's, for me, I did some personality tests. Five years ago, I may have these results. Right now, when I did another testing, I get a different results. Okay, so... Actually, when you do that, you can understand actually human evolve, even our personality can evolve. So through that, from your, when you learn personality psychology, you can see, okay, human evolve and actually our characters may evolve, especially depending on our situation. Like for me also, a friend of mine told me that I'm the most boring person you can text. Okay, but I'm very good when we talk face to face. So actually, I'm an introvert. So texting, for me, it's okay, but sometimes I do not know what to respond. But and it's okay. So my friends like okay with that with me, like even my friend were very blunt about it. I'm okay because that is from her perspective. I understand that she was just trying to say that this is my opinion about you. Nothing personal. So it's okay. Besides that, when we COVID hit last year, actually, I really kudos to all Uniraza lecturers because they really last minute, they had to suddenly adapt to online learning. We were actually already started, but we were taking off, taking it step by step. But suddenly, we went into open drive. And all the courses have to go online. So now at that time, I was already in Uniraza online learning experience. We were already managing Europe. I was part of the team. So even my team, we also had to adapt. With my actually psychological qualification, I know that, okay, I need to calm down and I need to adapt. Okay, even actually that first one or two weeks, my phone blew up. A lot of lectures need requests. No, I need to be calmed down. I need to say one by one. So even when I'm feeling overwhelmed, I know I need to step back a bit. Thing. Okay, and then how can I proceed? So actually that helps me. And again, as I mentioned, 
kudos to our lecture because in this field right now with the current COVID, online learning is not easy. So thank you so much to my team was very good. To all the kudos to all Unirazak lecturers who are actually very good in suddenly also adapting to the online learning. That's it from me. Thank you so much, Mr. Shazwani. Um, it's it's really good to know that uh, what you learned in psychology program. I when did you do your degree? It must have been quite some time. My degree is two thousand eight until two thousand twelve. Right. Okay. And that's about um almost nine nine years ago. And you're still yes. yeah. And 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 you are still applying what you have learned then now with your interactions with your friends with your colleagues, especially like you said, you know how you cope when you got all those calls from Uniraza lecturers. Probably me, one of them. All running headless chicken well <laughs> but uh but uh i think you have coped so well and um and i'm, I'm and it's really helpful to know that what you have learned uh nine years ago, 10 years ago, can be applied, is still relevant, and, and you're using it today. That's good. That's that's excellent. Before I go further, I just want to uh, highlight and welcome all those who are busy commenting on the uh, chat box here. So, hi, Mohana Devi. Uh, you, you, are, you are really one of a big supporter. And uh, Shantini, hello. Salma Sulaiman, Tarti. Uh, Shamsul says... Hi to everyone. Um, and we have our, our lecturer as well, uh, Puan Nor Olya. Binti Dola says, awesome. I think it was when uh, Shazwani was uh, talking. Uh, we have Sri Salina who says, hello, waving. Uh, Shantini said hi back to me. Okay, thank you so much. Stay tuned. And if you have any questions, please take this opportunity to ask your lecturers um, and the Dean of uh, School of Education and Humanities anything that you want to know about mental health issues uh, that that is uh, embedded in psychology program uh, in the courses and also in what you're learning right now. Um, great, uh, Lina also says hello. So, uh, my next question is to Prof Saida, directed to Prof. We know that the field of psychology is a broad discipline, as Shazwani has mentioned, you know, from, from cat psychology to dog psychology to human psychology. Now, there are so many disciplines offering multiple programs to pursue and uh, specialize in. What sort of expertise within the psychology field do you think that Malaysia is still lacking from? And uh, maybe you can also share with us top five psychology specializations that are currently in demand. Okay, Thank you, Grace. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I was so passionate when talking about psychology, especially now during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. But first, let me explain the meaning of psychology. Psychology comes from the Greek words psychic. Psychic means soul. And after a certain uh, period of time, the, uh, the uh, philosophers uh, shift the uh, definition of psychic from soul to brain to mind. So when we are talking about psychology, those who want to uh, uh, enroll in psychology uh, programs, it is about learning, learning about the soul. We, you cannot see the soul, but your observable behaviors are driven by your internal constitution. I have my friends, I have my students uh, are in front of me. And for me, each and every one of them are very special. When you know that the soul is so pure, they come to you to learn. Even those on the street, their soul is so pure. They, they behave as they do because it is driven by their internal constitution. So when you are talking about learning uh, psychology in any program or in any course, it is about to understand people and help people. It is not like uh, you are measuring or specializing in mathematics. It is learning about knowledge, about subject. When, but when you are learning about psychology, it is a learning about human, whether it is a, about it is about human behavior. 
and uh, it is about understanding understanding their inner self so um, i have I, when we really understand this it is nothing else left in your heart except for love yeah except for love and it start becoming because it is soul and you start loving everyone because you want to help them so if you are talking about the uh, five top in malaysia right now when i also working with them uh, when dealing with organization who has um, I mean, organization that uh, deals with mental health issue. Number one is clinical psychology. So, uh, do you know that when parents start talking to you, uh, sharing with you that number one, their their kids start uh, pointing from school at to shed. Their kids start um, uh, locking their door. Yeah, their kids start uh, behaving like marah marah, and that is the symptom of something disturbing them internally or their soul is not at peace their mind is not resting at peace they are overthinking and most of the behavior is about translating their unrest soul into overthinking so i i, I have a few friends um, who are psychologists therapists and um, i have also a case of students who keep on jumping from one psychologist to another psychologist because they are not really, um, I mean, the psychologists are not really um, into that uh, particular uh, developmental uh, uh, period of uh, the patient. So, for example, when I'm talking about the top five, number one is clinical psychology, especially adolescent and children's psychologist. That is number one. Number two is developmental psychology. You know, some of us have, uh, I mean, maybe uh, I am 60 years old. That is my uh, biological age. But my mental age is about 15. Maybe it's about 40. And there are also adolescent, remaja, they are 18 years old. But the, I mean, their biological age is 18 years old, but their mental age is about 15. Sometimes it's about 10. What does it mean? There are gap. There are gap between their biological age and their mental age. And one of the uh, 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 specialization that un try to understand uh, this uh, uh, gap or understand uh, between this biological, developmental, and uh, 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 cognitive uh, is either cognitive psychology or developmental psychology. Developmental psychology, we have two. Yeah, uh, children's developmental psychology, adolescent developmental psychology. Because these two types of psychology fields have uh, some uh, uh, way of dealing and understanding the inner uh, self of children's and adolescent. So another a specialization, specialization in psychology that I'm in right now is educational psychology. Why some people learn best? Why, uh, Dr. Zaida, do you think that anak saya ni lembam? Do you think that anak saya ni memang bodoh? Do you think that anak saya ni ada ADHD? That is educational psychology. Try to understand what take place when children's kids try to learn something. So we are dealing with learning style, multiple intelligences, um, uh, best practices in teaching and learning for a certain type of students, understanding uh, uh, special educational needs, that is educational psychology. And you become the consultant for parents who really want the, uh, for, especially for the home uh, schooling children, the parents really want you to, uh, to do some identification of um, uh, learning uh, progress or uh, pro learning problems uh, in their children. So another um, uh, specialization in psychology is health psychology. So I went to one health psychologist to uh, help me with uh, my weight problem 
So, wow, yeah, that is good health psychology. So, uh, in nutshell, there are many types of psychological uh, courses, programs that those out there who are interested to learn about people, why people behave, and the most important thing, you have the opportunity to help people. So, um, I think that is from me, uh, Grace. Back to okay. you. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Zaida. Um, <coughs> I, I wanted to take down notes to, to, to wrap it up, but I, I wasn't able to. I was so drawn into what you were saying. I think what you have said is, is very, very much uh, relevant, very interesting and intriguing on how parents play a huge role and they themselves need support when it comes to you know their children's education and personality and things like that. We also have a question from the audience and uh, I feel that it's uh, directed to uh, Prof. Saida. This is from uh, Manso Lumansani. I'm so sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. Can't we learn psychology by reading psychology books and observation? Actually, anybody can take this question. Uh, so the question is, uh, yeah. Yeah, may I answer mm -hmm. that? Yeah, sure. Uh, you may. You may learn psychology by taking, uh, by just by reading. But actually, uh, when you are taking a course, um, reading is not enough, but um, really experiencing the process of understanding kids, people, uh, the elderly, that that enrich your learning experience, that enrich, complement the theory and the uh, through your readings. For example, I'll give you one example. Parenting and family psychology. You can always learn about how to be good parents, but unless you have the professional learning community among parents where uh, that is where the programs really offer uh, the, uh, I mean, really, uh, for me, my program, Parenting and Family Psychology course, for example, we have professional learning community out there to come with us. It is not about reading. It is about really sharing their experience to deal with different kind of problems in raising their kids. So I think, yes, you can uh, learn. You can learn about um, psychology through reading, but you really have to have knowledge yang saya katakan dalam bahasa Melayunya, to have knowledge yang menitiskan makna ke dalam diri. Tentang soul, tentang people, tentang dia punya behavior through enrolling in any psychology programs. So, um, okay, if I, kalau saya menjawablah uh, soalan itu Cik Mansur, soalan Cik Mansur tu, yeah? yes, you can. But um, enrolling in any psychology programs really helps. Exactly. And you also get that feedback. And if you have any questions, uh, you know, you can get it answered from not just one or two, you know, you, you will have a pool of expertise there for you to uh, to talk about and discuss. And um, I, definitely you will gain more than, uh, than reading per se. Uh, thank you so much, Prof. Uh, I, I think I will ask the other question later. Uh, oh, okay, it's going on now. Right, so this question uh, by Kairul Saida Abbas Azmi. Do you have any statistics at Uniraza of students, uh, lecturers or staff facing any depression or mental illness due to COVID-19? How did Uniraza handle these cases if there were any? Um, uh, either Prof or Puan Lili can, uh, Miss Lili can answer. So, uh, Prof, would you like to answer? Or <laughs> maybe I would just supplement uh, uh, her responses just now. Yeah. So, um, we are not psychologists, uh, mm. how to say, um, per se, okay, <laughs> at the faculty. We have a designated counsellor actually at the faculty, um, which I believe has the uh, information on how many uh, students who resort to um, guidance and counselling session. Yeah, so I think at the faculty level, we have done um, a lot of hand holding in that sense. Yeah, hand holding. We don't provide um, guidance and counselling, but it's more of hand holding in that sense. So the, our hand holding is more of like providing services and help talk to students, and students can reach 
any one of us at any given time, okay? And they are free to share with us uh, any concerns pertaining to their studies. Sometimes we do have personal issues being shared with us. And if we need to refer to the counselor, we would do so. But if let's say the students are more comfortable talking to us, then we just tend to them, okay? So um, definitely we have cases. We have cases where students are feeling stressed up. Um, we have a lot of issues basically, um, not just uh, staff, okay, but also students. Um, there were uh, some students had some, you know, uh, uh, private issues, domestic violence related issues. Um, some are financial, some lost their job. Um, some had um, health scares, you know, that kind of thing. So health, health matters, um, uh, miscarriage, you know, divorces, a um, lot, lot of challenges basically. Um, and then some of them had to let go of their uh, businesses and therefore they have lost income and they, they lost motivation to um, continue their studies. So in that sense, uh, we are at the faculty level, we are trying our best, our level best actually to give support to our students. Yeah. So uh, I cannot provide you with the statistics, <laughs> it's kind of PNC. But however, um, how we attend to our student is that we have uh, one, we have one internship student uh, dedicated with, uh, she is attached and dedicated to our school that help with, um, you know, reaching the students. And usually we have like, um, I think weekly session, we have, we have weekly session, um, just like a pillow talk session where students feel free to go to this um, intern. Okay, she's actually uh, has a master in uh, guidance and counseling. So it's actually uh, the right person, okay, to go to. So. Uh, she worked with the uh, in-house counselor that we have okay uh, in the university and um, students usually use these uh, services for free okay so because if you go out there charge is quite exorbitant out there i think it's about 100 per hour yeah so i think that's one of the um how to say um, um our responsibility our social responsibility um in helping our students to uh, basically navigate their way in the tough times, especially during the pandemic. So I hope that answers. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I think I think that answers perfectly because uh, we are all we are all doing our best. And uh, whenever a student reaches out, um, as educators, we make sure that uh, that students' needs is tend to if if not by us, we, if we not by us by someone else. Right. So yeah, even uh, in my classes, um, I have also seen the need for students to have that uh, quality communication with each other, not just us, because it, it has been a norm that students are just listening to our lectures and it's not really going a two-way thing. Two ways, one, uh, but students communicating with each other is a second uh, challenge that is um, that I have faced. And so um, I try to create that safe environment in the classroom and also have um, other Google Meet sessions with them just so that they can be online uh, friends and um, because they've not met each other before face to face. So things like this is, um, is definitely uh, something that Niraza is working on and improvising on how to get uh, students to come together and uh, and reach out when they have a need uh, to do so, be it academic or also if uh, they have uh, other kinds of uh, stress-related issues, anxiety-related issues and things like that. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Lee, for answering that. And on that note, my question for you is, um, how does having a qualification in psychology help play a role in society? Other than creating awareness, how can the skills and knowledge be put into helping current situation? Okay, thank you, Ms. Grace. Uh, to answer the question, uh, Ms. Grace, I would like to share one key trivia that was related to the 9-11, that was like ages ago, right? So it was a 9-11 tragedy um, to support my following answer to this question. Now you may probably wondering what is the relation between this and the COVID pandemic. So basically there was a study okay, conducted uh, on more than 36,000 uh, New York residents okay, and rescue workers, uh, which revealed 
that after the attack, 40% still had post-traumatic stress disorder and 15% experienced depression after 14 years. Yeah, so much higher rates than in comparable population, which is 5 to 8% um, to the total population of New York. Okay? So now we are talking about small. 9-11 is particularly small. It's a specific group of people who were directly impacted and affected by the tragedy that the whole world knows about. Yeah, uh, Imagine COVID-19, which is a global phenomenon. Okay, world population is about seven plus billion people. So you can imagine what are the effects of the post-traumatic related stress can do to majority of the world population. Okay, in the long run where people experience sudden death of family members, they can't even see their family uh, members during their dying times. They can't even go to the funeral. They can't even do proper burial. Yeah, they experience loss of income financial collapse, huge financial collapse. Um, and yes, Im unimaginable uh, severity uh, in terms of mental health decline, which, which are affecting okay, their daily life operation and functionality. So many people are barely surviving um, in, in this sense, yeah? so. They are in a lot of distress. People are a lot of distress. So even for my students, they are a lot of distress. So I pretty much try to handhold them. Okay, like I, I usually persuade them to treat learning as an escape rather than a prison or a burden for them. Yeah. So that's why I, I my class is rather casual in that sense. Yeah. So I think my students know this. Um, therefore, it's paramount to understand okay the impending needs of. Uh, psychology for those who wish to pursue their careers uh, that are related to human nature and functioning. So there's a lot of extensive research studies done on COVID mental health toll um, on the major population. So scientists are tracking, uh, there's a surge in depression because it's increase of suicidal rates. Yeah. So researchers are using huge data sets to link uh, changes in mental health related to coronavirus response measures yeah so the distress in the pandemic probably stemmed from people's limited social interactions some are living alone so can you imagine if you're living with family you're still blessed what about those who are living alone yeah in isolation um sometimes even if with families but if you live with families who, who are abusive that can create a lot of mental uh you know mental concerns, yeah, mental disorders, uh, mental stress. So there's a lot of tensions among families in the lockdown um, together, all together, yeah, especially with the work from home and then your spouse lost their job and then um, there's a fear of illness, okay, according to psychiatrist Marcella Richel uh, from the Central Institute of Mental Health in Germany, yeah. So studies and surveys conducted so far in the, pandem in the pandemic consistently show that young people it's the young people okay probably the elder people are a bit more you know uh susceptible to death maybe they're open to that yeah but young people rather than older people who are most vulnerable okay uh to um increase psychological distress so perhaps because their need for social interactions are stronger uh there's also um increased statistics that um people are speed dating through <laughs> During the pandemic, there's like suddenly there's an urge of people, uh, you know, uh, suddenly finding themselves they wanted to get married, you know, the things like that. So, um, data also suggests that young women are more vulnerable, okay, than young men and people with young children or a previously diagnosed psychiatric disorder are at particularly high risk for mental health problems. Yeah, so those are based on studies. So this proves that. The unparalleled needs for graduate who has qualification in areas in psychology. All right. So to answer your question, how does having a qual qualification in psychology will help play a role in society? So basically, to prepare you, okay, for a career uh, as a professional psychologist, okay, even if you don't go for, uh, you know, as a psychologist, 
if you go for human to human interaction services just like Wani, okay with regards to human experience and making sense of it so this could be uh, relating to your career or your job as an educator you can be counselor social activism basically self-help facilitators or services providers okay not necessarily you could be doing something else but because as long as you deal with people that will help with your everyday dealings with other human beings yeah so this will basically help you to make sense okay to make sense <laughs> of human behaviors on daily basis yeah so of course uh i think number one okay the one of the perks of uh, having the qualification i think uh one you can conclude with me <laughs> okay perhaps later uh number one is that you get to enjoy fun okay fun doesn't mean fun haha <laughs> fun but like fun in the sense that it it is um how to say it makes sense to you 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 are you you have passion in it so that that's what i mean by fun yeah so enjoy fun rewarding challenging work even for me as an educator i had fun okay i had fun uh dealing with my students so i think they know how i was like in the class yeah so um when we giggle in the classes sometimes you have fun there's some serious moment but yeah um so if you love solving practical and theoretical problems and then earning a psychology uh, qualification like a diploma or a degree might be a great choice for you okay just like one year. so some psychologists focus on developing solutions for real world problems or just helping people resolve complex emotional issues i think um that one is the most prevalent <laughs> i think i think during the lockdown a lot of people uh, just realized that they have like oh my god i have childhood wound issues <laughs> you know things like that so you got to address, okay, you got to address whatever and resolve uh, psychological issues that you have. And this will be the best time for self-introspection, you know. So uh, others delve deeper, okay, into understanding of the human mind and behavior by conducting research, okay. Um, if not, then you just like simply observing. Um, just basically, if you were conducting research, you would add to the body of the scientific knowledge, yeah. So research shows that most psychologists enjoy their work okay and <laughs> around 93 percent of psychologists in the field report of feeling somewhat or very satisfied with their careers okay so um it's about the feeling okay it's about the feeling next is that if you are able to make a difference in people's life i like my job because the fact that i know that i can make a difference in people's life i know that i can touch the lives of my students or maybe my clique you know in that sense so um that sometimes this is spiritual uh communication that i deal about with my students so if we ever dream of making real difference in other people's lives okay earning a psychology uh qualification can be an effective way to achieve okay that goal right. so basically you can be uh you know um uh, contributing to yeah. Uh, helping people overcoming their own adversity, your adversity, okay, increase their own well-being. Right, well -being. Me, so sorry, I have to yeah. just, uh, I mean, it, it what sure. you're saying is absolutely uh, true yeah. and absolutely relevant and it's okay. very interesting uh, to know that, you know, because you have uh, obviously done some background uh, right. on this and, and thank you so much for that input. Uh, but okay. because we are running a little bit out of time and there's a lot of questions from the audience, so I'm going to read out again some of the comments and questions as well. Anybody can answer. Uh, Fee says, hi, madam, nice topic. Uh, our very long-term a uh, fan and follower Arif welcome hi selamat petang dan assalamualaikum so uh, welcome to you uh, and then we have uh, Sophia who says embrace psychology for all benefits that's very true uh, Ain Zahidan says missing all my lecturers must be referring to uh, Miss Lily and Prof Zaida um, and we have Kyrol Zaida uh, Great, Uniraza, keep it up. Okay, uh, I'm going to go to the question now. We'll start from Mr. Sunny, uh, also one of our supporter. Thanks for the sharing. If one does not have the background of education at degree or master's level, would he or she be able to take up PhD in education? Anybody, uh, maybe Prof would like to take it? Uh, thank you, Sunny. 
Yeah. Um, PhD in education, doctoral degree. What does it mean? PhD in education is about elevating your graduate skills, about doing uh, uh, some kind of investigation, uh, reading about pertinent issues in education. So education is why it is from educating the young learners up to educating the, the adults. You don't have to have background in education to do PhD in education. I have one student uh, have a background in engineering uh, uh, in a university and he is an engineer director in one department in one state and doing uh, engineering education with me. So when it come to PhD education, the only things that um, uh, differentiate between PhD in education, PhD in business or in management is the foundation, uh, the foundational theory that could back your, your uh, findings, yeah, that could back up your findings that must be embedded in education field. That one, um, as I said, PhD is about uh, elevating your graduate skills, about searching, about um, um, uh, criticizing. And definitely it is not. Uh, this is something that you can read. This is something that you can always explore. And when it comes to the class, it is about really understanding the uh, research methodology and how could the theory in education fit in to make the foundation, the basis of your uh, study. Sunny, welcome to PhD in education. You can do it. That's a good one. <laughs> okay, Sunny, maybe uh, I hope that answers your question. And also if that was the question of many audience who are tuning in right now. Uh, now, our next question, anybody can answer, uh, Ms. Yuzalinda. Can you provide the name again for the person that is in charge of guidance and counselling, I believe from Uni Razat side. So, um, uh, I think uh, Ms. Lini mentioned that we have a counsellor at Uni Raza. So, um, uh, would you like to uh, mention the name? Oh, okay. Um, if you're a Uni Raza student, there's, I believe there's two in-house counsellors, <laughs> okay, from CIS that you can reach. Um, the first one is Mr. Hidayat. And number two is probably Madam Asniza, I believe. And then we have uh, two interns, okay. Um, one of the intern is actually at our school, okay? so, which is Miss Shafika. So you can, yes, you can deal with Miss Shafika as well. So um, I hope that. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Miss Lily. So, yes, those are our uh, counselors. And um, I hope that answers your question. Uh, our final question is from uh, Mr. Arif. Apakah kesan kepada para pendidik dan pelajarnya di seluruh Malaysia terhadap pandemik COVID-19 di bahagian pendidikan di waktu sekarang lagi di peringkat universiti? So I believe this question has been addressed earlier on when we started but maybe it was in uh, English and uh, perhaps um, Prof Zaida can say something and it can be in bahasa, no problem. Okay, uh, Arif, terima kasih atas soalan Arif. So, um, Arif, guru-guru uh, uh, mengetahui tentang perlunya ataupun sam, perlu sam, akan sampai ketikanya bahawa kita menyediakan kanak-kanak hari ini untuk kerja yang tidak ada. The job is not there yet. Ataupun kerja-kerja yang baru. Dulu kita tak nampak, kita tak tahu pun ada grad. Ya, yeah. Kita menyediakan anak-anak untuk kerja yang belum wujud menggunakan teknologi hari ini yang akan obsolete for the next five out, five years. Jadi, I've been talking about menggunakan ayat yang ini sejak saya mula menjadi trainer ya, di Kementerian Pelajaran. Back in 1998, keep on giving, I mean, uh, reminding teachers that we are educating students uh, for the job that is not as it. Masa tu tahun 2004, kita senaraikan 15 kerja yang tak ada pun ketika tahun 1990-an using the current technology which will exist in the next five years. Tiba-tiba datang COVID. Bila datang COVID, kita ada. Kalau di kementerian dulu, kita ada. Bukan kita tak ada VLE frog. Bukan kita tak di tak diajar tentang integration of technology. Tetapi kita tak 
tak uh, percaya ya bahawa kita akan ada remote learning. Remote learning ialah apabila kalau di di uh, kanak-kanak sekolah mereka ada di kampung, mereka ada besar orangan, ibu bapa bekerja, tidak ada komputer, internet sangat tak boleh dipercayai dan ketika itu di pada bulan satu, bulan tiga, bulan enam sepatutnya peperiksaan setengah tahun ya bayangkan anxiety anxiety yang dihadapi oleh ibu bapa anak saya ni ketinggalan tak doktor anak saya ni dah enam bulan tak boleh membaca lagi that is anxiety who's anxiety anxiety budak ke tak anxiety ibu bapa anak dia ya yeah. what is anxiety anxiety ialah apabila kita mula uh, membandingkan diri kita dengan orang lain ya yeah. will uh, what people say matters itu yang timbulnya anxiety kalau kita keep on thinking about that ada um, um, overthinking dia akan jadi, jadi uh, anxiety disorder kalau kita terlampau mengikutkan itu dia akan jadi anxiety attack jadi kita takut sangat ya ibu bapa yang mula merasa anxiety kemudian guru-guru kalau guru-guru ni pula dia merasakan bahawa uh, they are very passionate about teaching they are very good about knowledge giving they are very good about physical teaching suddenly they have to teach using screen technology which they are not trained uh, Uh, menggunakan dia, dia, kita menggunakan Google Meet dia menggunakan Google Classroom uh, seorang menggunakan kla- Google Classroom seorang lagi menggunakan StreamYard tidak ada keselarasan di situ pada mula-mula dulu dan ketika itu kita tak dapat kita dapati bahawa uh, uh, if you are talking about uh, the attributes of effective teachers characteristic of effective teachers kalau menggunakan SKPM 4 tu tak cukup untuk mengkategorikan guru, guru yang bagus, guru yang tak bagus bagi menggambarkan sukarnya untuk mengenal pasti guru-guru yang berkesan menggunakan screen teaching. Am I answering you um, Arif? Begitulah. Tapi saya rasa slowly ya. Yeah? Anak saya cikgu, anak murid saya yang saya latih beratus-ratus dekat uh, Maktab Institut Pendidikan Guru tu pun guru. They are what really help them is hands holding what hmm. really help them is the professional learning community just like say school of education and humanities when we know that most of our some of our students really have some kind of uh, problems personal problems and um uh, we create uh, what we call a learning community call uh, profia Uni Razak Learning Community for Early Childhood Education under Madam Olia. So uh, this learning community really provide help in terms of academic and social. So we hope that it really helps. And am I answering that? Um, yes, I think uh, you have answered it very well. Uh, and uh, thank you, Ari, for that question. Uh, he is one of our avid supporter and he, he is always tuning into our our programs okay uh shazwani again so sorry to <laughs> but i'm sure i hope that you're enjoying our discussion today uh so uh my question is directed to you your role in current career re- is related with servicing with academic and current students students are struggling with the online learning and some students we know are facing some issue uh, for example with stress and anxiety due to environmental factors that influence how they think how they act how they feel on your side how do you help these students adapt to the new norms and maybe motivate the students how do you do that Okay, thank you, Grace. Yes, I am enjoying this session. Now, through my background, actually, I always been in student affairs, student related matters. Okay, so even with Uni Raza, when I first came in 2015, my hours with the student affairs department. I deal with students with student activity. I participated. I help assisted. 2019, I transferred to this department, which actually manage the online learning. Now. Technically, you don't see me. You don't see me like the face of Eurox. You don't see the team behind the Eurox. So besides me, there are my, three of my other colleagues working with me. Now, what we can do is what we are trying to do, like Dr. Zaida mentioned just now before this, there are varieties or maybe some lecturers, they will use Zoom. Some will use um, Google Meet. Maybe some will use other things. But right now, we have standardized. What my team is, we are actually providing help behind the scene, especially to your lecturers. 
Okay, we have one very good instruction designer with us who actually working with lecturers how to make the subjects easier for students to learn online, especially. Okay, that's why for some courses you can see we are trying to incorporate more and more online activities. We are trying to reduce the lecture time. So before this, you may have two hours straight in class. Now maybe the lecturer will reduce one half, one and a half hour to one hour. Then you will have to do some sort of activity, let's say maybe discussion, um, other like online lecture game. So right now we are trying to work behind the scenes how to make especially online learning easier for the students. It takes some practice, but slowly we are moving towards that part. And as Madam Lily also mentioned just now, I would just like to answer her question, what she mentioned that Besides, although my background in psychology, I'm working in education-related field, it's not just me. So they're actually my friends, uh, my classmates. All of us, maybe I have a degree in psychology, but we enter a variety of fields. It depends on how you sell yourself when you want to start working. Okay, There are some of my friends who actually work with the armed forces. There are some working with banks. So there are some, they start their own business. Some, they go into education too. Okay, so it it's okay. So some maybe they say you take diploma in psychology, but degree that you can pursue some other fields. Maybe they say business. So you can understand, okay, about, about people and business, how do you want to combine them together? Okay, yeah, that's it from me. All right. Thank you so much. Short and sweet. Okay. So um, on that note, I'm going to wrap up today's session uh, by asking Professor Dr. Zaida to tell us a little bit about uh, the programs that we have and it's embedded with psychology and also a final advice from yourself on behalf of uh, say. Thank you, Grace. Um, we have a diploma in psychology. And actually, the inspiration comes from a research done by one of my PhD students um, uh, in psychology, when we found that 48% of secondary school students have some kind of mental health issues, like anxiety, bipolar, depression. They don't have purpose of life or ikigai. So it really... Um, uh, um, hit me and uh, when we are uh, we want to do uh, one um, psychology program we think that it is good to start from diploma in psychology so uh, our diploma in psychology uh, program are uh, preparing students for lifelong learning uh, because uh, this psychology will be the pathway for them to enroll in other uh, psychology uh, specialization uh, in their bachelor degree and we are preparing students for adult roles, like what Shazwani says, that they are playing many roles, actually. And uh, as a personal, for personal life as well, they will be get, they, they are sisters, they will be mother, they will be uh, friends to their uh, spouse. And by having some kind of knowledge and some kind of experience in studying uh, psychology, they can be a better person dealing with other people. And um, we also, uh, this program also preparing students for future career. And uh, some of the uh, my favorite course in this diploma in education is like parenting and family psychology. This is for personal well-being and we have motivation and emotion. And the best part is we are also have um, a learning psychology like myself. I really understand my four kids. I really know them, their personality, the way they teach. I mean, uh, um, I really understand their motivation and my first girls told me that I am the best teacher and um, uh, home is the best school and the school is the best playground. Can you imagine that? I really understand their personality. My first one is extrovert. My second one is introvert. My third one is ambivert. My uh, fourth one is also ambivert, the ability to adapt to situation. Once you understand them, I know my spouse. I can list. I mean, we can really for the 35 years of marriage, never once I have the, the intention of fighting back or talk back. I don't have to do that because 
I understand people around me. So this program, the Diploma in Education is very comprehensive from the personal, from equip, equipping students for personal well-being up to preparing them for their many roles that they will play uh, after graduating and be the pathway uh, for the, uh, I mean, for future uh, academic undertaking. Okay, I think um, this is all from me. And maybe would like to say also, if this is my last note, I would like to say this. Um, and do you know that why psychology? Why I'm learning psychology? This is all about mental, how your mental works. When Sunny says that philosophy, a PhD, I would say this, you know, anak -anak, that PhD is not difficult. PhD ni tak susah ya. PhD ni sorry, PhD ni tak senang tapi sangat sangat senang. It is all in your mind. I love research so much because of the way you play with your mind. Uh, learning psychology is not only learning about people, how they behave, but also learning and understand yourself. Macam you, kalau macam Madam Lily kata, when you look at people, sometimes we think that people don't respect us, but what inside them is fear. Do you know, I mean, um, saya tak pernah rasa kecil hati. Saya tak pernah nak rasa marah. Because when one people say bad things about me, there are only three things about them. Number one, they, I am the threat. Number two, they want to be me. Number three, they hate themselves. You know, as simple as that. It doesn't give me a damn if people say bad thing about me. It is psychology. So, yang best kali adalah self-love. Self-love, self-care. It come to the last end, self-help. And uh, saya nak akhiri dengan sabda Rasulullah, ya, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, hari Jumaat ini. Dia kata, the best of people are those that bring most benefit to the rest of mankind. By offering diploma in psychology, I hope that there are many teenagers out there. Sebab dia diploma, teenagers out there who in my research and my studio research, 48% of them has some kind of mental issue. Minta-minta pada Allah, ya, semoga by enrolling in that program, somehow it help, it help them. Yeah, uh, to, to It help their personal well-being, uh, help in self-love, uh, self-care. And the most important thing, dia akan, uh, apa tu, uh, termasuk dalam, uh, dia ada that positive thinking. So, I really hope that my diploma in psychology end up with this having people with positive thinking. Okay, Grace, thank you. Okay. Back to you. Thank you so much. So lovely. And we can definitely see that passion so clearly from you and and, and how much psychology is uh, so valuable and very, very uh, relevant in, in especially today's time. Uh, thank you so much, Prof. Saida. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to uh, ask uh, Ms. Lily and Ms. Shazwani to just say like two, three sentences uh, of advice or um, anything that you want to say to the audience right now? Okay, um, Ms. Lee, yeah. maybe I start first. Okay, yeah. so um, my last word for everyone, okay, is that uh, always, always, always respect and trust yourself and love yourself first, okay? I think that is the key to combating anxiety, stress, and depression. I know I've been in one and I've get out from one. So, yes, help okay. yourself before you help others. <laughs> All right, exactly. thank you. That is, is very <laughs> true. Help yourself before you help others. You really need to look to yourself. And uh, uh, Wani? From me, if you like psychology, and uh, try to look for this movie from Disney, Inside Out. This movie, oh. so Inside Out is actually like psychology 101. If you enjoy the movie, you want to know further, maybe you should take a program in psychology then. Yes, I, 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 I've got to know quite a lot of personalities by watching that movie as well. I mean, I, I realize and can relate to, to many of those characters. Uh, so that's a good movie. Okay, um, I wish I could prolong this uh, discussion. It's a very good one, but I assure you it's not going to be our last. Um, our uh, audience uh, are saying that uh, we did good. We look amazing. Sunny, thank you. Uh, lovely session. Um, um, uh, Miss Olya says, hi, Sunny. Oh, okay, Miss Olya is talking to Sunny, all right? And also, 
Ah, okay. So she's relating to that movie as well. Okay, uh, ladies and audience, thank you so much for tuning in today. Thank you again, Prof. Zaida, uh, Miss Lily, Miss Wani, for your preparation, for your time, and uh, availing yourself for this. I know we have so many things to do on a Friday uh, uh, night. We are wrapping up a lot of things, preparing for our weekend classes. But thank you for taking time out uh, to spend with us and the audience. It has been a very fruitful discussion. I have learned so much from it. I have um, also learned a lot about psychology by just uh, moderating this session. And I'm sure our audience out there is uh, thinking about, you know, the impact and also uh, the benefits of uh, learning psychology. And um, it's good to know that Uniraza now offers diploma in psychology. That's really great. Okay, so uh, thank you again, ladies. And I'm also going to uh, read out some of the announcements by Uniraza. Uh, Uniraza July intake 2021 is still open. I believe this is the last week that you can apply. If you're still if you're interested, uh, please grab the chance. Apply now and grab Uniraza scholarship that is available uh, by visiting our website, W www.uniraza.edu.my You can also contact us at the number uh, below the screen. Don't forget to follow My Uniraza on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to My Uniraza YouTube channel and stay tuned for our upcoming events with interesting topics on your TikTok live sessions. Don't forget to keep your social distance and stay safe, everyone. Thank you once again.